someone else not naming any names might need a breath mint too, so I'm certainly going to go ahead and pack those. <laughs> What's up tribe and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me again. If you are new here then my name is Mariah and I have been documenting my pregnancy journey for rainbow baby number one. We are finally towards the end of this pregnancy so it's definitely time to go ahead and get things ready for baby's arrival which is why I'm filming this video. So in today's video obviously by the title I'll be going ahead and packing my hospital bag. I do have a list here so I'm just going to share with you guys the things that I am packing and in my particular bag it is going to differentiate for each individual the bottom line is everyone needs something different when it comes to their hospital stay because everyone is going through a different type of birth experience a different type of labor some women are doing c-sections others are doing inductions others are preparing for spontaneous labor some people are doing home births which still you want to still pack a hospital bag even for a home birth just in case but my point is everyone is different so I'm just going to share with you guys the things that I feel like it's important to bring to the hospital for the duration of my particular stay. So I hope you find this video helpful. Don't forget to hit that like button and feel free to stick around and subscribe. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I actually have a list down here which is broken up into various categories including electronics for your comfort, toiletries, food and beverage, and cosmetic. So I'm going to go category by category and just show you guys what exactly is going into this bag. That is my suitcase. Um, that is the bag that I will be taking for approximately a two to four day stay. My particular hospital told me to prepare for a 48 hour stay for a vaginal delivery. If I was to happen to get a C-section, it would extend that stay by about two more days. So that would be a three to four day stay at a minimum. But in my mind, what I am kind of prepping and planning for is about a approximately three day stay, just a happy meal medium so I don't necessarily overpack but I don't want to underpack either. Okay so for category number one which is electronics the number one thing to bring is we all have phones so the number one thing you're gonna want to bring are chargers and yes I did say chargers plural because you want to bring more than one you never want to get into a situation where your charger poops out on you especially when you're at the hospital you can't just necessarily run anywhere to get one real quick especially during these times because a lot of hospitals are not allowing partners to necessarily leave and then come back and and you don't want that to disturb your process anyway so definitely bring your phone chargers i will try to link these and majority of whatever else you see in this video under the amazon store link below but these chargers right here these braided ones i think they are like pretty much the bomb i have about i think four of them they come in a pack of four or five but the reason i went with these is because they have a 10 foot charger as well as six foot chargers so those are going to be really important for me to pack and have with me you definitely want to have a longer cord because you don't know how far away from the outlet your bed is going to be so you don't want to have to worry about sitting your phone like way across the room and not be necessarily able to access it for some of you that might not be a big deal but for me i'd rather just have my phone next to me even if i'm not using it and be able to still reach it so i know most of us who have like either iPhones or Androids they come with the standard three foot charger I would just go ahead and buy like a 10 foot charger another good thing to have is one of these plugs now this plug as you can see has four different USB ports so you can charge up to four devices at one time and you only are occupying essentially one outlet. So this is really great for charging your phone while charging your spouse's phone while charging pretty much any other device that runs on a USB charger. So definitely pick up one of these because like I said, you don't want to have to worry about not only not being able to charge things, but then only being able to charge like one thing at a time. Next is going to be your vlogging equipment or whatever it is that you might want to use if you decide that you want to record your birth or take pictures, whatever it is 
that you have planned make sure you have the equipment with you to do it and make sure you have extra batteries for it so me personally I'm gonna take my DSLR with me just because I know that newborn photography is probably not so much a thing right now just due to COVID and the way the hospitals are functioning so I definitely want to get some great pictures of my baby right off the bat if I have the energy at least to do it and if not I'm sure my husband will be able to at least snap something on here so I'm taking my DSLR it already has a battery in it but I'm also taking an extra battery just in case you want to make sure that you take not only your camera and your camera battery but go ahead and purchase an extra battery because the last thing you want to worry about is getting up to that memorable moment or that pinnacle point and then suddenly your camera is like blinking at you or shutting off because the battery is dying or dead so it's way easier to just worry about swapping out an extra battery and always having the camera kind of ready to go versus trying to function with only a single battery but even with having two batteries you want to just go ahead and bring your camera charger as well bring whatever equipment you like but I'm bringing my DSLR along with my extra battery and my charger speaking of extras you want to make sure you have enough SD storage so make sure you bring your SD cards as well I have a couple of them but I'll probably upgrade to one that just holds a larger capacity altogether the ones I have are 32 gigabytes I will probably just upgrade to either a 64 or a 128 gigabyte card and that's just so I can get the most memory once again not having to worry about swapping out SD cards in the middle of like what could be a pinnacle moment whether that is the moment of birth or just something else you always want to be ready and prepared and definitely make sure you have enough storage for your camera or vlogging device another thing that I am bringing is obviously my phone is coming with me so I have an iPhone so my phone as well as my iPad which I have right here the iPad mainly because of the music I want to keep my music completely on a separate device that you know my husband can tinker with and control and music is something that personally for me helps me to relax a bit and is a little bit calming for me especially in stressful situations and I know that there can be a lot going on at the hospital so I am trying to create the most relaxed atmosphere as possible so I am bringing my iPad for music along with the Bluetooth speaker so this is just a small Bluetooth speaker that I am bringing with me also with that comes another charger so obviously I'm going to make sure that I charge this before going but I'm just going to still grab the charger and bring the charger with me just in case along with any other cables that go with it by the way these little containers that I keep showing you guys these are actually from gum so I believe extra and five the two brands extra and five gum they come in these little plastic pouches so if you go ahead and buy gum for the hospital anyway buy an extra pack and you can use this pouch to store cords and cables in these are really good for storing because you can just pick these pouches up very quickly and you can already see through them to see what's in them okay so the next category is for your comfort and these are just things that I feel like might make my hospital stay just a little bit more comfortable and things that frankly the hospital may already provide I'm saying may because some of these things I know they do not provide but others I'm sure they will provide but what I have might be a little bit more comfortable for me than what the hospital will provide. So I have my own cloth mask. As you guys know, we've been doing this mask thing for a minute now, but I know the hospital will certainly provide masks if you don't have a mask, but the cloth ones might be a little bit more comfortable for those of us who do still have to wear a mask while, you know, nurses and doctors are coming in and out of our rooms. So I'm definitely bringing my own cloth mask and who knows, their disposable mask might wind up being more comfortable in the moment but just to be on the safe side I'm going to bring an additional one next I have baby wipes this was one of the um, trial size or sample packs that came in one of my gift registry bags except for it's actually expired yeah it expired in June but I'm not gonna use expired wipes on my baby so I figured I'm not gonna waste them either why not bring them along you might be saying what do you need wipes for my skin gets really oily sometimes I get really just sticky and I feel uncomfortable and it would be nice just to have something cool to wipe myself off without necessarily having to ask for a towel it's also great when you feel kind of like sweaty to just have this as something very quick I don't know what's going to happen I might not necessarily be able to get in and out of the bed so for me personally I'm going to pack some wipes just in case for myself like I said 
product. I may not use them at all, or I might use them, but they are something that is just frankly nice to have. Another thing that's nice to have is Blistex. So I hope you guys can see that because I know my light is like a lot. There's a lot of light coming in here. I am bringing just a small tube or a small tub of Blistex. You can also use like Vaseline if you are not necessarily a Blistex fan. I probably will get a stick one as well because I feel like that's gonna be easier for me during the labor process to just go ahead and take the cap off and use it versus sticking my finger in the tub. But I do like the tub because the tub is a little bit thicker and I know for me when I'm in the hospital, my lips tend to dry out and I get really irritated with how chapped they can sometimes feel. So Blistex is something that every girl should have in their bag anyway. Next, I am bringing cozy socks yes these are the old navy like cozy socks that are usually like a dollar around the holidays and i'm bringing them because my feet tend to get really really cold i in general get really cold when i'm in the hospital so i want to make sure that i have additional pairs of socks that can at least do a good job of actually keeping me warm and along with these socks i am also bringing a bathrobe see there it is guys here is my bathrobe. I've had this thing for quite a few years now, but I'm also bringing the bathrobe because once again, that's something that's going to be more comfortable for me because it is a little bit on the thicker side. It's nice and like a stretchy I'll show you guys. It's like a stretchy type of material, but I get really cold in the hospital and I notice that I tend to ask for blankets a lot and nurses will continuously ask me, oh, can I get you another warm blanket? But sometimes like that just does not work for me. The blankets are super thin. It's cold in the hospital. So the blankets only stay warm for a very limited amount of time. So I figured why not just go ahead and bring my own robe. This will be for me to change into after I deliver. And it's something that for me is just like one of those comfort items. For some of you guys, it may be a blanket that you want to bring. I personally don't want to bring one of my blankets because I'm too scared of forgetting it. But yeah, a robe and cozy socks are two things that I definitely recommend packing. Another thing that I'm bringing along with the robe and socks are a comfy set of pajamas. These are kind of cute. They have little dogs on them. Not that that's important, but they are really soft material. So there's a pair of pants here, as you guys can see. There's a nice long, I would say it's probably gonna wind up being more capri length by the time I'm done with them, pair of pants. And then there is just a long sleeve shirt. And once again, I'm preparing for what I know about myself is that I get really cold. And I really don't necessarily like wearing hospital gowns. I don't think anyone does, but I find hospital gowns to be oftentimes really itchy and just uncomfortable. So the moment I can change out of that, I probably am going to and change into these knowing that I might be in the hospital for anywhere from two to four days I definitely want to have at least one pair of pajamas that I can be somewhat comfortable in even if it's only for a couple of hours so something that other moms have suggested that I go ahead and bring with me it may seem very like unconventional I don't know so some of you who have given birth already it may make total sense um other people might not have even thought about it or thought that they needed this but a heating pad. So I have this heating pad and it's just the kind that plugs in to the wall. But I was told that it was useful to bring because after you give birth, you still have a lot of that cramping, which I can definitely believe my body, although I have not given birth in the, I guess you wanna say traditional sense. When your body goes through miscarriages, it is somewhat still in that laboring type of state. So you do go through some of those similar things after pretty much everything is expelled. So I definitely believe the moms when they said that the cramping is real right after giving birth and shortly after giving birth. So I definitely wanna go ahead and just bring my own heating pad so long as the hospital lets me use it. I know that they will probably have heating packs, but once again, the heating packs, once they activate, you only have a certain amount of time before they cool off and they're no longer effective. So I'd rather just bring my own heating pad versus relying on the heating packs. A great thing about the heating pad is that I can also control the temperature of it so I can make it a lot more warm with the heating packs, the same way with the cooling packs. You really can't have that type of control over the temperature. So so like I said, not necessary for everyone, but it might be something you wanna consider. Okay, next thing I have is not going in the hospital bag, but it is going in the car, which is this orthopedic donut cushion. And here is what that looks like. Hopefully you guys can see it. 
until somewhat at least. Like I said, I will link this on Amazon in the description below, but I've heard that if you get any type of stitching or just in general, the afterbirth pains can be really uncomfortable, especially if you have a longer car ride home. We have about a two hour and I wanna say 45 minute car ride home to look forward to after giving birth. So I definitely wanted to grab one of these because the turnpike is really, really rough. If you guys don't know what that is, it's the highway. The highway from here to our hospital, it's really rough, it's really bumpy. They often are doing construction on it. And you hit those points where even now I'm still pregnant and don't necessarily have pains going on down there, but I am at a point where it's uncomfortable sometimes and the bumps, like I said, the potholes are just god awful. So I've heard that these tend to help with the car ride home as far as sitting, as well as just sitting in general, even around the house after you give birth. Another thing that I do not have to bring with me, but I might try to find within the next few weeks weeks are athletic slides like the Nike athletic slides. I used to have a pair but one of our dogs wind up ripping them up and eating them so I don't have them anymore and then the other ones that I borrowed are now too small because my feet have kind of grown in size and thickness but athletic slides they're going to be way more comfortable and easy for you to just slip on and slip off. I find that they're a lot better than um, flip-flops for walking around hospital floors and also when it comes to showering so athletic slides are something that like I said, I don't currently have to add to the bag, but I am gonna to try to obtain a pair within the next few weeks so that I can put those in my bag as well. Other than that, clothing wise, I really only plan on bringing one to two outfits. Um, one will just be for the comfort of going home and another one will be just for me hanging out in the hospital. I have quite a few pairs of maternity shorts, so I'll probably mostly likely be wearing those in like oversized shirts that I don't care about getting like necessarily messy or messed up. But I'd say the main thing to focus on as far as packing the bag is concerned, is just making sure that you have a comfortable hospital outfit in there. Along with my going home outfit, whatever that is gonna look like, I am gonna be bringing some just sports bras with me uh, just for not only the car ride home, but to definitely keep myself contained. I do not like necessarily being braless in the hospital. So I'm bringing pretty much just like three different sports bras with me and they are different styles and different sizes because I'm really honestly not sure what is going to fit once I'm there and if I'm holding on to any additional fluid. I don't really know how it's all gonna work out. So I figured bringing a couple of sports bras certainly couldn't hurt. Okay, the next category is pretty much vitamin supplements and medication. So anything that you've already been taking during pregnancy, um, especially, almost dropped my vitamins, especially if it's something that has been prescribed to you, you're gonna wanna take those to the hospital with you and make sure you have access to them. My hospital, of course, has the pharmacy and has the same medical team that I already see all in one place anyway, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take just a few of the medications with me and mine are mainly really just like the rest of my stool softener and my inhaler. I have asthma, so I'm technically not supposed to be traveling anywhere. I'm not even supposed to get in a car unless I have an inhaler in my purse on me at all times. So I'm gonna take an inhaler with me. I'm also gonna go ahead and take dual softener with me. And then I'm also just gonna take my preferred prenatal vitamin with me. Yes, the hospitals have prenatal vitamins. They are the generic kind. Um, they are comprised a little bit differently from this particular brand. So if you have a brand preference, go ahead and take it with you. One thing I will say is that you still need to inform your medical team about whatever medications or vitamins or supplements that you have with you so that they are tracking that you're taking them as well. Okay, the next category on my list is food and beverage. So as far as beverages are concerned, I plan on taking three things. First being my hydro flask. I absolutely love my hydro flask. It keeps my water cold for days. You can pretty much put ice in here and a lot of times, two to three days later, it'll still have the ice in it. This is a lot easier than continually asking nurses or anyone else at the hospital for ice water or water in general. Also, I like the fact that I know where the water is coming from because I don't, especially during these times, like my water sitting out in the open and exposed to air and germs and all of that type of stuff. So I'm definitely going to take the hydro flask with me. You can put other things in here, but I plan on just using it as my main source for water. Also, I'm going to bring Gatorade 
grade zero. These have been a lifesaver for me as far as my hydration has been concerned because water doesn't necessarily always cut it. So I'm definitely gonna be taking some Gatorades with me as well as some vitamin waters. I don't have any vitamin waters right now because I tend to drink them as soon as I get them, but I will be purchasing some more vitamin water and some more Gatorade to go ahead and put in my bag. I also plan on purchasing just a few granola bars and maybe some other snacks. It'll really depend on what I'm in the mood for that week. I will be waiting until that week to actually put snacks in the bag because my preferences pretty much change on the weekly basis. So I might be wanting something more like a granola bar that week or I might want something entirely different. So as far as snacks goes, I'm gonna hold off on actually packing those until that week. But I know more than likely a cereal bar or some type of granola bar will wind up in there and probably also some type of nuts, like either some almonds or some cashews or something like that. Other than that, I know that these are definitely going to wind up in my bag. If you don't know what these are, these are mambas and they're little like, they're little candies that basically, they're chewy, but you don't necessarily have to chew them. They're similar to Starburst, but less sticky. So I will also be packing these little candies because it's nice sometimes to have just a little bit of something sweet that you can just quickly pop in your mouth and not necessarily have to worry about physically eating something. Sometimes you just want something in your mouth to like settle your stomach or to just get like a nasty or dry taste out of your mouth. So I'm definitely gonna be taking a couple of packs of these little candies. Aside from the candy, I'll also be bringing the icebreaker mints along with me. I think I have some gum somewhere in one of our cars too that's gonna more than likely come with me as well but having these things with me tend to be helpful and it's a little bit more of a soothing tactic for me sometimes to just pop a mint or chew gum. Um, it releases a lot of tension and it can also help if I'm feeling nauseous. So I will definitely be using these breath mints. I'm sure that someone else not naming any names might need a breath mint too, so I'm certainly gonna go ahead and pack those. Okay, so my next category is toiletries and cosmetics. So, that being said, I am bringing a bag that has like my makeup in it, and not all of my makeup. It's really just gonna be mainly used for my eyeliner, mascara, my eyebrow brushes, some pencil, or little things like that. And I think there's probably like some lip gloss or something like that in here, along with a mirror. No, I am not doing like full blown makeup with eyeshadow and everything else. And I will not be using this probably before labor either, but after labor, I might wanna feel a little bit Bit more normal and not feel necessarily so crazy so me putting on a little bit of eyeliner and some eyebrow pencil may or may not help with that I don't know but I rather have it and not need it than feel like man I wish I would have brought it and then not have it so I'm bringing a small makeup bag just for those particular items along with another bag it's actually like a nail polish bag but it doesn't have nail polish in it and in this bag basically I have a scarf, a satin scarf. I have headbands and then I have a couple of hair ties. So this is essentially functioning more so as like my hair bag. I do plan on having my hair put up in some type of style that is not going to require me to have a comb or a brush with me. So my hair bag or my hair kit is going to look very differently from a lot of your hair kits. Like I said, it's very easy to just contain this in one particular bag. That way, even if your significant other or your support system is there, or even you yourself, you're not digging through the bag rummaging for these various items they're already contained in one little pouch and finally we are down to the toiletries now these I'm a little bit particular about because I have very sensitive skin not all materials and not all soaps actually agree with my skin and not only do they disagree they can cause things like rashes um, and lots of irritation and inflammation so I am bringing my own soap I know the hospital has soap but I don't know that they necessarily have the Dove for sensitive skin. I usually will just get this Dove that's for sensitive skin or I'll get the unscented bar, but usually a white bar is the only thing I use as far as my body that does not seem to irritate my skin. Um, I can on occasion use other types of soap, but on a everyday like consistent basis, it has to be Dove and it has to be like either the unscented or the sensitive skin. Also, I'm just bringing my own 
toothbrush and my own toothpaste. I really don't necessarily have like an extreme preference when it comes to my toothpaste, but I know that I don't dislike this toothpaste. So it's just easier to just grab my own. And like I said, it's something that's really small and really compact anyway. Yes, the hospital has toothpaste, but I might not necessarily want to use that toothpaste. I also am going to be bringing some floss with me because sometimes it's really irritating when you get stuff or food stuck in your teeth and it's stuck there and you don't have any floss. So I figured floss would be good to add in along with the toothbrush and toothpaste. Along those same lines, I am also bringing my own washcloth and my own towel. Hospital towels can be really rough, really scratchy and really small. This towel, I know for a fact, is a lot larger than the ones that they actually provide in the hospital as well as a lot thicker. The other thing that I'm bringing mainly so that I can swap them out on the car ride home are these disposable nursing pads. So I'm bringing these disposable nursing pads. This is how they originally came in their sample pack, but I actually once again repurposed a nail polish kind of pouch and put just a bunch of the nursing pads within this one pouch so that I get a lot more out of them out of only carrying one container. So here's kind of what they look like. They're fairly thin. They look like essentially panty liners is the same thickness of them. Not necessarily sure if the hospital will have these or not, but I figured why not bring my own because I know I'm more than likely gonna have to swap them out while we're making our way back home. And as I previously mentioned to you guys about having sensitive skin, I will also need to bring my own pads. These are the Always Flex Foam pads and I cannot use the regular like mesh pads. They just do not work for me. And I don't know what kind of pads the hospital are gonna have. I know they're gonna have the giant like oversized ones, but if they're like that netted mesh type of material, those 100%, okay, maybe not 100%, those 90% of the time irritate my skin. So I am planning on bringing a bunch of these Always Infinity Flex Foam pads with me. In any event, I would rather not set myself up and bring what I know works for me and works for my skin versus relying on what they may or may not have. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That is what's going in my hospital bag. So I hope you all really enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for some of you. Feel free to drop below in the comments what things you found the most useful to bring to the hospital with you or to back in your hospital bag. I'm definitely curious as to what you guys have to say. That's all for this video, guys. You already know the drill. If you liked it, make sure you give us a huge thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to join our tribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Ladies, I am sending you all positive vibes and lots and lots of love. I hope you all are having an amazing and wonderful week and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.